remember my father telling me anything negative about my mother. I remember once my mother told my father something because they had a fallout. And he, he, he did have verbally abused her. And she said, uh, the choice is yours. I'm not telling you to love him. I'm not telling you to hate him. And that was very critical in my life because she said to me, hate him then. And I've locked up my father for life. Yeah, so, so, but I could never remember both of them telling me anything. But I, I didn't have the opportunity to see both of them live together because I think they would have separated when I was a baby. Okay. Right. But in, if they had instructed me differently, then I might have been a different person towards my mother or my father. And so, it's important that the the, the source of our influence uh, is important for us also to know who and what we are connected to. What is coming through a system? Because that would create an image in your mind because our, our brain is like a canvas and our tongue is like that paintbrush. And when things are spoken, or our eyes, what we visualize, what we connect, it goes in and it forms an image. And that image impacts on behavior. Who are you reaching out to with the law? Is, are you primarily focusing on the males in our society uh, with, with, with this publication? No, I, I focus on people. Okay, because uh, when I talk a lot about males, interact with a lot of males, right. you, you get that kind of response. Like somebody said to me recently, uh, if a woman was talking to me, I would have turned off. But I have never heard a man like you talk about your inner experience and stuff or thing like that. And that gave me courage now to talk. Very early as male in society, we could have lost our voices because when you cry, you're good, you're sissy, you have to be strong and robust, you must express emotions. So those things now are suppressed. And sometimes when it's released, it's very deadly, it's dangerous. Has it been an emotional experience for you writing this book? Because you often hear people when they talk about writing uh, a book, a memoir, or, or anything that involves a personal experience, that just the act of writing about it and talking about different personal experiences can reawaken certain emotions and so on. Has it been an, uh, yes, an emotional it's experience? Been like that. Um, every time I, I talk about it, they take me back to uh, around age 10, 11. Um, there was an arrangement between mother and father. I mean, mother and grandfather in terms of, what is it called, summer, we you know, August Sunday. Right. And um, no, I would come by my mom in silence. My father would take me for a few days up the the road. I, I, I grew up quickly, I had a big head, so they just called me Headley. Right? Right. Yeah, I would just see, I don't care, you know, you don't care. Yeah. So they just called me don't care, you know, yeah. I was down in a socket. Okay. Well, my face wasn't full out yet, so they called me liver lip. Okay. And I don't know how I was growing, so they called me tall and they told me how I keep it. Now, if you put all that together, I want to say, you know, you have a nose, you smell in the sun, you need before you cook. Right. And, and you put all that together, look at that image of a person. I just was a misfit. But I guess growing up, then they understand, no, I was number one. Number one is always odd. <laughs> but it is a critical number. Yeah. And, and you are really crazy. Right. That was sure they had having to go through that kind of museum. I wasn't physically yeah. I'm robust to fight, so I, I, was, I was a bully. Yeah. Um, I was bullied. Um, being called nickname, and it did affect me emotionally. But when I come down to town, not necessarily see that spot, up by my father laughing through that two step brothers, they left us in the streets. Yeah. So very early, they started teach me languages and scenes. So when I go back to the country, I tell them people certain things because I mean, I can't fight back and tell you, I can get one. Right. But you know, country, everybody can beat you and discipline you and stuff at that time. Right. So my grandfather felt I was getting rude and out of hand, but he played sealants. Let me tell you, so my mother still drew. My mother used to draw an invisible fence and tell you, don't cross that. And you know, they have a thing when they talk about your split, go by the pipe, do they drive? My mother's like that, serious stuff, the pipe wasn't far from her. So I got this guy like wrong mommy. Obviously, I did think she didn't know behind her back, but I had to really sneak and keep it under the radar. And when I went back to Beach, um, this particular year, she came for me to go um, holidays with her. And my grandfather said no. And so she went to the police station, they came back, they had a discussion based on the arrangement. The police said, no, you have to let him go. My father be the company in the business, you know, um, big ego. He said, uh, if you leave, don't come back. I'm at the price. Say, pack everything. Don't leave one hoof. Don't ever come back here. I said, I'm the village of my common entrance. So I had the journey from Beach. Now, now all these lights like now. The next thing I can fully remember is when I opened my eyes, my mommy lit a lamp. And I recognized there, this is my place of God for the rest of my life, really, from a relatively kind of secure environment, comfortable environment. The down see that's not how see that is today. That is when you have to walk on your pallet. Yeah. That is when you have to have your bottle of water. So when you come out of that mud and that slum and thing and you reach out the road, you have to reach out your foot and have something really sweet to grease out that nasty scent from the man. And, and, and it, whatever you saw in the day, that's what you have to do with the night because yeah, it's, it's bored. And, and almost, <laughs> I'm almost sorry, but the time is running out. Yes, yes, yes. There's, there's so yeah. much information. 
uh, coming out of it, and, and while we would certainly hope that people take advantage of the opportunity come come Saturday. So let's let's yes. remind everybody again. Yes. It's Rag to Rose, a book launch in Tobago, uh, Calvary Road Deliverance Tabernacle, four roads in Bonacourt, Tobago, from 8 to 11 on Saturday coming. Uh, and you can get more information on tickets and the book itself at 688-5220, 688-5220, six, or 780 Two four seven two. Any final quick words? Any final quick words? The quality of your life is determined by the quality of your decision. The quality of your decision is determined by the quality of your knowledge, and the quality of your knowledge is determined by your influence. Where you are, don't have to be a final destination. The choice you make. Makes a difference. Pastor Raymond, thanks very much for joining us uh, this Sorry. morning. Good to get your perspective as well. And uh, already, uh, just the little chat over the last few minutes has uh, made this seem very, very interesting. Rag to Rose, the journey, real life scenarios, and 